Hello everyone, in this video I will be talking about what rod stroke ratio is and the difference between a short and a long rod stroke ratio. Let's get started then. Rod stroke ratio is the, basically the ratio between the connecting rod length and the stroke of the crankshaft. And to calculate this, you would need to divide the length of the connecting rod to the stroke of the crankshaft. So as an example, I would use the BMW M20 B25 as I am very familiar with this engine. Now the rod length for the M20 B25 is 135mm and the stroke of the crankshaft is 75mm. So when we divide 135 by 75, we get a rod stroke ratio of 1.8. I know that may not sound much, but what that means is that the engine will, with that rod stroke ratio, is more suitable to revving to higher RPMs in an engineering point of view and having a longer rod stroke ratio will help breathing at higher RPM so that equates to more power up top. Not so much but if you are searching for <clears throat> that little more then this is an option to consider. The reason why a longer rod stroke ratio is more suitable to higher RPMs is because it slows down the piston acceleration away from top dead center and the effect of this is that the piston will stay close to TDC for longer at around 16 to 18 degrees after top dead center. And if we can maximize the cylinder pressure acting on the piston during that narrow wide narrow window, sorry about that, we will end up with peak torque and for that given RPM range, we'll end up with the maximum power. As a side benefit, a longer rod stroke ratio will also reduce the angulation of the piston and connecting rod during operation. As a result, frictional losses will be reduced and the thrust loading on the piston to bore will also be reduced resulting in less wear on the cylinder wall overall. I emphasize though that having a longer rod to stroke ratio also provides a longer dwell at around top dead center. Conversely, a shorter rod stroke ratio of maybe 1.5 or 1.50 if you like an extra decimal place would not be really suitable to higher RPMs and would make less top end power overall but it all depends on what engine we are working on and how much we can change the rod stroke ratio given the constraints of the engine we are working on. A shorter rod stroke ratio will also increase the wear we see on the cylinder walls. Along with faster acceleration of piston from top dead center, this will also improve the engine's breathing at lower RPMs. That's not to say that you can't use a lower rod stroke ratio to run your engine to higher RPM range maybe in the region of 8500 to 9000 RPMs, provided you are using quality parts. Because at lower rod stroke ratios, when using factory parts will end up badly because the factory engineers only in design the pistons and connecting rods to only handle the factory rev limit. And maybe with a little bit of a buffer for safety. All in all, if you are faced with the situation where you can't improve the rod stroke ratio and getting more capacity and adversely affecting this ratio by going to a stroke or crankshaft it's more beneficial in improving performance although there's a trade-off at higher rpms that is it will produce a little less power but as with all things there's always a compromise the engine would still make more power and torque overall but at higher rpms at around 8500 to 9000 and beyond, depending on what your desired rev limit is, there would be a little less power but not really all that significant, especially when your focus is only in improving overall performance. And every last horsepower is not all that critical compared to the likes of Formula 1 engines that they have to squeeze every last performance possible while still being in the rules. There's a good video of our Garage 4A GE on the performance benefit of changing to a longer rod stroke ratio on a 16 valve 4A GE. I'll put up a card here on the right hand side so you guys can check that out. Well that concludes our topic for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and if you liked the video do leave a like, comment and subscribe for more. And if you would like to support the channel, links would be down in the description box below. Do tell me down in the comments down below what would you like to learn next? Maybe calculating compression ratio manually? 